Hey, what's up, dudes? Kublai Khan here. Welcome to Discussion Pacific Standard Time. Stream 7.30 tonight. Yeah, let me say it straight. There's a stream tonight at 7.30 PC... P <laughs> anyway, stream tonight at 7.30 PM Pacific Standard Time. Sometimes I get flustered. It happens. Anyway, I've been really enjoying doing these kind of vloggy things during the stream announcement, so I wanted to move on to one that has been a question a couple times. I have been asked, is it okay to do survival roleplay or permadeath roleplays on your own YouTube channels? And the answer is, hell yeah, go for it. I think that would be really cool. It's also probably going to help me, and that's the thing that I wanted to explain because of uh, session time. Session time is how YouTube decides who to recommend. Uh, the good example of this is that a 40 minute video has 40 minutes of watch time. If you did 10 5 minute videos, that would be 50 minutes. If someone watched those straight, that's a 50 minute session time. So YouTube cares about longer sessions on YouTube, not necessarily longer watch time. So you have the watch time of the video and the session time. So what ends up happening here is if you were to make a video that was similar to what I do, a survival role play, YouTube would look at the amount of time someone watched your video, right? And then as they're watching it, they go, okay, this guy is very similar to Kublai Khan channel. Gotcha. Kublai Khan channel is getting us like five days of session time per day. We should recommend all this person's videos over to Kublai Khan. So basically, whenever your video finishes, my videos show up in the suggested videos and along the side at the end of the videos. And so basically, you're now competing directly with my videos as your viewers are going, oh, look, there's this other guy who also does this and check it out. He has a thousand views, five thousand views, two thousand subs, whatever. And that potentially could lead people over to me. Now what's interesting is if that does happen, then my session time increases more, and then I get a little bit bigger again. And then once again, YouTube goes, oh, maybe I should feed more people this way. I doubt it's a viral growth kind of thing. However, I do see that as kind of a trend. Now, what is interesting about this is on my channel, that won't be the case. You won't see recommendation back to you because I have the bigger session time, right? Because I'd be more established. I'd be doing this for longer. And so YouTube would just keep people on my channel, but what you're doing in your hard work would feed people to me. This is a kind of a weird situation because it, it sounds like YouTube's screwing you. It's trying to increase how much people view on YouTube. And I've seen this happen, and it also can work in your favor. And let me explain this part. If you continue making videos, making videos that are good quality and growing in that regard, YouTube will see that you're doing pretty smashing good work. And it will go, hey, these people are watching for 35 minutes in this session time, and this is this is interesting. He's doing something similar, or she's doing something similar to Kublai Khan. Let's send people from Kublai Khan over to you. The cycle would reverse. I would get the original boost of people. If you're able to continue and prove that you have good session time per user, YouTube will be interested in sending more users to you because you've proven that you do well with the users that are on your channel. I've seen this happen with me. When I was, you know, starting off, I would have a lot of videos recommend you guys to many a true nerd. And it was something that I knew would be the case because he's an established larger channel. Recently, I've beginning to get traffic from many a true nerd videos to my videos because YouTube's seeing the session time from you lovely people engaging, sharing and all that. Thank you very much, by the way, it's really fun. And they're seeing that and going, all right, we should send people to Kublai Khan. And so because of that, I'm now receiving kind of the stuff I provided him in the beginning. Now, I'm sure I provided him a drop in the bucket. I'm sure I'm taking a drop in the bucket from him. But a drop in the bucket from him is a friggin' jug of water for me. So it's kind of cool. But anyway, the point is, is that in the beginning, I would be receiving the benefit from you dudes making these videos. It would help me. And then... Over a little time, if you're able to prove to YouTube that you're making these quality videos, it would actually suggest people back from me to you. And of course, this would also happen with any other Fallout 4 channel. I'm just giving an example that in the survival roleplay, which has been I, mostly my channel kind of doing that sort of thing, that it would actually go back into, you, like, we would be kind of side by side in this, and you would originally help me. Now, I have some recommendations in regarding this. I would recommend doing a unique build, something that has been only done by you kind of thing, nothing on my channel similarly, because if you do something similar to mine, you will have people who will see, let's say you do a commando demolition similar to the sugar bomb right now, 
people will see that I'm doing it too. And they might just look at the views, just look at the feeling and go, wow, YouTube's really recommending a lot of this guy. I'm going to try this guy. And then there's this kind of thing where those like, you'll be competing directly with me on my ground, uh, on my home turf, you know, on my ground. I created this thing. And now, I mean, the community created it, excuse me, community created it. However, it's like, but we, you know, fused it together. Now you have to compete with that, you know, bit of clout. However, if you did like an unarmed build, then when someone is seeing that there's a commando, sugar bomb, whatever build, they go, oh, that's really cool. However, I'm here for the unarmed part. It's now uncomparable in a way where, I mean, it's still being compared, but it's now just different enough that you fortify yourself against some of that initial jump. So... Anyway, the kind of the, the sweep of all back. Session time is what YouTube cares about. That's how much time people spend on YouTube, not necessarily how long the video is watched. It's how much time people spend in one session on your channel. Two, you will conf like compete with me directly, and it will actually help me at first because you bring attention to this whole keyword, and then you direct the attention towards me because YouTube considers me to be better because of session time and size. However, that's not necessarily true on like a, a content standpoint, but from YouTube's point of view, session time, that's what it cares about. Eventually, if you prove to YouTube that per user, you have a good session time, it will start trying to send people back to you in the same way that it happened with many true nerd and me. And then my recommendation alongside of that would be to try to be different and unique enough that when you're being like compared to me in the YouTube sort of suggested videos or on the side thing, that you look different enough that people won't necessarily jump straight to me in regard. I mean, in the long run too, that could even help me because then I'm like, oh, I'm different from you. And then so it's, it might actually be a good thing all around, I don't know, um, but that's just my initial feeling, or not initial, but that's my thought. Anyway, dude, so that's the situation. Uh, 7.30 p.m. stream tonight, Pacific Standard Time, yeah. Looking forward to seeing you dudes again. Loving to remind you dudes, and of course, thank you so much for watching. It was a joy to have you here, and of course, when the ground rises to meet your feet, wind always be at your back, and the sun shine warmly on your sexy, sexy face. Dudes, see you later.